So we're going to have a look at WaveBurner now, which is the program down here. Looks like a little CD with the uh, the burn symbol on. So we're just going to load this up. This is the program to use for creating CDs with audio on them. This is the one you're going to be using for putting a CD together to hand in your coursework. Um, how you can bounce a mix down onto CD to listen to home and make judgments and also when you get to your producing exam in your A2 year this is the piece of software we'll use to create the CDs. This is the, the main window you get. You get two lanes here and a whole load of bump at the bottom here which tells you all about the audio files you've put in. What I tend to do is straight away get rid of the mix lane, we don't really need that and uh, the easiest way to put audio files in is to just open a finder window find the audio you want um, I've got a track on the desktop that I'm gonna quickly whack in and as you see it brings up the waveform here and you actually get the region down here with the with the name of the, the region you can actually um, select it and you can choose to replace it with another one if you've made an updated version of a CD and you've you've saved this wave burner session as a as a whole mix for you know however many tracks you've written if you just want to replace the file you can do that you can show it in the finder to remind yourself where you've actually stored it um, you can write comments to yourself about how you mixed it you know whether it was had a limiter on the main mix bus that that kind of thing and also it gives you a, a, a start and end point and shows you how long how long the tracks are, things like that. So that's uh, the general comments. Um, you can actually see here that these are the regions we've got and you've also got the CD tracks and this is what it will actually come out like on, on a CD player. Some of the CD players can actually play track names. So if you want to change the track name, so I'm just going to call it... Um, We'll think of a title, but I'd call it Mixed Down or something like that. That would be the name that would actually come onto the CD player. Now you've got something here called SCUMS, which is Serial Copy Protection Management System. And this is essentially um, allowing you to make sure that no one can rip this music off a CD. So if you want to take it home and be able to rip the music off the CD, you want to turn this onto free here. Um, or if you want to give it to give it to your friends to rip off uh, the CD, that's how you do that. And also, it's worth mentioning here as well that um, this title at the moment is just called Untitled. Um, that also comes out on the CD text as well. So if you want to save it as something so that when it comes out on your CD player, it actually says what the, the album's called or the EP or whatever, you would want to save this WaveBurner session to your hard drive somewhere and call it something that you would actually want the whole thing to be named. You've got on here, this is the essential... Um, the audio editing window you can zoom in and out using the um, scroll bar on the mouse or you can also use this red bar up here this shows your navigation of the whole project so you can quickly zoom around with that um, quick way of creating tracks is to at the moment there's one track here with a pause length of two seconds before the track starts that's how red book cds they all work like that they all have to have a two second gap between tracks um, but you can also create tracks within uh, the the mix so you can literally hit t and you can create another track here so when you actually play this it will create a new time track there and you can move it around and you can be really quite precise about it or you can just delete them by hitting the backspace key. Now something to have a look at is um, editing the start and end points of the tracks. Um, this is why you don't really need to worry about um, how much time is at the beginning or the end of your mix because you can do it all in here when you actually want to put it onto CD. So rather than try and get the beginning and end points really tight in logic, it's much better to just leave yourself 5 or 10 seconds either side of your audio file, make sure the reverb dies out at the end, stuff like that. Because you can zoom right in at the beginning here, if we just have a look, zoom right in the beginning and you can see where the waveform starts and you can actually just select here and the pointer tool turns into a bracket which you can then hold the mouse button down, pull to the right and it will edit the start time. Now you notice you've got a little green line here this is actually the output level so you can actually make the whole track louder or quieter here so you can balance different tracks on your cd but you can also drag this little point out here and you can fade in so just like you would on a on an audio file in logic where you would have a nice beginning and output 
and out sections on your audio files you can do the same thing here so we'll just make sure we don't get a clip and what I'll do is I would have a listen to the end as well and get a, I'm going to do a fade out in a minute so we'll just have a quick listen to this make sure it's starting right so we'll just play it from the beginning that's all well and good I'm just going to go towards the end and there's an ending I don't really like on this just kind of fades away to nothing and there's some noise you can hear the um, that noise there you can hear is the actual uh, the sound coming from the headphones into the microphone so what I'm actually going to do is um, we've got a chorus here I'm going to actually fade out through then so I'm going to drag this back to here and then I'm going to zoom in and what we can actually do is take that point and create a fade and if I have a half minute fade or something like that it shows you the fade length there there are some other points during the fade line as well where you can actually make the fade a little bit more professional so we've got a little uh, kind of logarithmic curve there which actually sounds better to the human ear than a straight line so I'm just going to play that see what it sounds like Okay, so that sounds pretty good. I'd probably be happy with something like that. Um, you can also, once the region is selected, you can actually put plugins on the region. So if I wanted to add, for example, some audio units, third party plugins I had here, or the actual wave burner plugins, which are very similar to all the ones you get in Logic. So for example, an EQ, I could EQ this, this one region. So if I thought, well, actually I mix this one slightly bass light, I think it's pretty bass light anyway. <laughs> might just add a little bit of low end something like that so we could have an EQ on this audio file but none of the others in the mix or you can have mix plugins which will apply to all the audio faders uh, all the audio regions sorry on your CD so things like this would be limiting um, maximization if you wanted to get rid of any extra headroom you had um, things like that um, it's always better to try and get the mix as good as you can on the audio file rather than trying to have to heave on a limiter at the end of the mastering stage. If in doubt, and if you're worried about this, just don't do it. Um, there's not a huge need to do it. Um, I thought that just this, this whole track lacked a bit of uh, low end at the beginning there. I think that sounds better with it. So once we've got that, that's essentially all we really need to do. Um, we can then, um, there's a monitoring window you've got here which just shows you basic kind of volume output stage. So you can see that that's pretty much hovering around, around zero a lot of the time and you can see the RMS or the peak values for that. And you can mono it to see if you've got any phase issues, things like that. Um, other than that, that's all you really need to know about this program. There's an awful lot more that you can do, um, but just for quickly burning a CD, fading in and out tracks, um, potentially applying some volume leveling between tracks and region plugins, and also the mix plugins, that's all you really need to know. Um, after that, you pop a CD in and click this burn um, icon up here. And it will then come down with this. Um, I haven't put a di disc in, it's waiting for a disc, but you can then select how many numbers of copies you want. And the write speed, which again, put to the lowest one, it will probably be eight speed, will be the lowest one you can put on. Um, do that and it will um, eject this disc when it's finished. That's all there is to it.